Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast covers section 9.3, Chi-squared test for association. A Chi-squared test for association is performed when you are looking for an association between two factors that both have distinct categories. In our example, the factors are species and location, and each has two categories. The former, the observed snail is either C. nemeralis, or C. hortensis. For the latter factor, each observed snail was either found in the hedgerow or the woodland. Thus each observation can be exclusively assigned to two categories, with each category being part of a different factor. We can thus summarise the observations as counts associated with two specific factor categories as shown in Table 9.5. Being a chi-square test, the programme requires expected values to compare our count data to. We can determine the expected values from the data itself using a process called cross-tabulation by constructing a contingency table. See box 9.1 in the book. Fortunately, the program will calculate the values for us before doing the chi-squared analysis. So let's do the test. I have entered the data from table 9.5 into SPSS, but the default expectation from SPSS is that each line contains a single observation. But to enter 172 observations would be rather tedious so I'm going to use another structure. Here, each line contains a unique combination of the two factor categories and a count column stating how many observations fall into this factor combination. I instruct SPSS to recognise that line 1 actually represents 89 observations and line 2 16 observations, etc. by weighting the data. I do this by tracking up to data menu and click. I track down to weight cases at the bottom and click. A window opens. I'm now going to click the weight cases by radio button, select the count variable and enter it into the frequency variable box using the arrow. I now press OK. So let's perform the chi-squared test for association. We do this by tracking up to the analyze menu and click down to descriptive statistics and a sub-menu list should open. We then track to cross tabs, short for cross tabulation, and click. A window opens. I now have to tell SPSS which variables we want to use. The row variable is our habitat, which is already selected. So I'm going to put it in the row box by pressing the arrow. For the columns, I want to select the species variable and place that into the columns box. I'm now going to go up to the statistics button and tell it which test I want it to use. A sub window opens and I'm going to click the chi squared tick box and down to continue. I'm now going to go up to the cells button where it allows me to tick the expected box which will give me the expected values it has calculated in the output. Down to continue and press OK. In the output window we can see in box 2 that the program has not only summarised the count data we entered, but has also given us the expected values it has calculated. The p-value can be found in box 3. In this case we want Pearson's chi-square and the value is 0 0.543. What does this mean? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. So a value of 0.543 indicates that we cannot reject the null hypothesis, that there is no difference in the distribution of the two snail species between hedgerow and woodland. If we look below table 3, we see subnote A, which tells us that none of the cells have an expected count less than 5. In your calculation, if some of the cells do have a count less than 5, then you need to refer to the book, as your probability value may not be accurate. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.